Welcome to our video tutorial on how to secure an access to an OpenSSH server using OpenOTP and a one-time password. Let's look at our architecture first. Going from the left, we have our user Bob wanting to connect with a PuTTY or similar SSH client to an OpenSSH server, now running with the RC Devs agent in it. The agent then triggering a one-time password with the RC Devs OpenOTP solution, the Web ADM server. Now the one great item that gets highlighted already here is that we're going to be using a real and existing directory account. So we'll be logging into our OpenSSH server with an active directory account and using the OpenOTP. Quite handy, it is. We'll show you how. So going to the SSH server that we want to secure, we start by downloading the needed agent components and we do that one by one here. But if you wanted, you could of course automate the steps with your favorite package manager. The individual packages that we're going to need are name services cache, unless already installed, RCDEV's OpenOTP PAM module, the part of the agent handling connectivity to RCDEV's authentication backend, the web ADM server, RCDEV's core Linux libraries, and RC Dev Span Key Client implementing ability for us to use Active Directory accounts on login along with centralized SSH key authentication, which we are not, however, covering in this video. So we're grabbing the NCSD first. To make fetching the RC Dev packages a little easier, we grab a WGET utility. And again, if you have connected your server with the RC Dev repos, you could just go ahead and install directly without downloading all the following files. Anyway, now as we got the wget, let's locate our packages from the RCDS public repository. Right, got them all here now. Then to install first Spanky client. As instructed, we disable the SE Linux and run Spanky setup. The only real setting here to configure is to tell the setup at YP address or hostname to find WebADM backend, the server that will be doing our Active Directory account validations. Done. And as we now enable Spanky agent for name services cache, we reload NCSD to apply the changes. Before finalizing our agent installation with the RC Devs libraries, we double check that our SSH server has PAM enabled. And also to make Bob's OTP logins a little more interactive, we also make sure challenge response authentication is enabled, which it apparently isn't, so we just switch that to yes. Double check the PAM value, save changes, and we're done with the SSH server configurations. Now, the following bit may look a little repeated. We'll add our WebADM backend IP address to OpenOTP client configurations as well. In our case, now being the same backend as for SpanKey agent earlier. In a real-life scenario, you could, however, have held up an SSH key-based authorization segregated to different RCDEVs backends, hence another place where to tell our agent location of our WebADM backend. And as a final configuration bit, we activate our agent in our PAM stack. Great, and we're done with our agent. That may have seemed like a lot of steps, but again, something you could have easily automated with your favorite package manager, for example. Then to testing. Before an AD user can log in with an OTP, namely the Bob, that user will need to enroll a one or more tokens. And we'll do that here now. As we are the admin, we'll go right into the admin panel of the open OTP, the web ADM server. And in that, we'll locate our AD account to which we want to enroll a token. But also, since our AD account is a vanilla Windows account currently, we'll need to first make a little more appropriate for usual Linux access. And we extend the account with Unix object classes, where we get to pick, for example, the kind of a shell that the user should have. Okay, then to enrolling the token. Choose the option to enroll with the QR code. Open up our OpenOTP token application 
and Bling, our AD account user has here a token enrolled to it. Cool, then just let's give it a try. Just to here prove our OTP login will actually be all legit and not just some demo hacked together for this video, let's open another console to the web ADM backend itself and leave the login trace open while we actually try to log in. And we shuffle the screens a bit just so that we get to see everything nicely. Okay, a regular SSH login then. Now conveniently with our AD account and password. And here we go. We've been prompted for an OTP and we picked it up from our app. And we're in. While on the right side, we see that everything seemed to go as planned on the web ADM backend. OTP was validated and Soxus was returned back to the OpenSSH server. And that completes our video. Thank you for watching. And for any added information, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at info at rcdevs.com or sales at rcdevs.com. Thank you.